What makes a YouTube real estate video go viral? Meet Will. Will made a video about living in Montana and within six weeks, he had gotten 1 million views. Wouldn't you love to get a million views on your video? Let's see what happened. On September 1st, Will uploaded this video to his channel. He and I are Facebook friends and after a couple of weeks, he emailed me and said, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. I was at about 600 subscribers before this video and now I'm getting like 200 new subscribers a day. I'm up to 20,000 views on this video already and it's only September 18th. Did you hear that? In 18 days, he got 20,000 views on this video. On September 19th, he had gotten another thousand subscribers and was now up to 50,000 views. It was so exciting to watch the progress of this video go from 20 to 50 to 100 to 300 to 500. And in fact, by September 25th, he had 500,000 views on this video and over 9,000 subscribers. I began stalking this video like you would not believe. I was checking its analytics every single day because I just could not wait for the day when it hit that magic milestone of 1 million views. It kind of stalled out at around 950,000 views and for a week or so, I was going, come on, come on, you gotta hit a million. It was so close, but it just kind of stalled. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, it took off again. And within six weeks of the publication date, that video had gotten a million views. So what did Will do that made that video so amazing? Well, I've identified five different things that I think contributed to its success. So let's go analyze it and see what he did so that we can try to duplicate those results on our own channels. Let's watch. Are you one of the people that's looking to get out of the big city and move to Montana and live out in the country? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you some things about living in the country in Montana that you probably didn't think about. So item number one is have a clear marketing hook. By opening the video with what the video is about and who it is ideally suited for, you grab the viewer's attention right away. Don't open it by introducing yourself and saying, hey guys, welcome back to my channel and having your brokerage logo all over the background. No, instead, start with a compelling opening statement that grabs their attention, lets them know they're in the right place and encourages them to keep on watching. The second thing that Will did great was the title. Now, you've heard me talk before about keyword research and living in Montana is an excellent keyword as far as the number of people that are searching for it on a monthly basis compared to the amount of competition there is. And if you've never seen my video on keywords everywhere, you should watch this one next because I love me some keywords everywhere. But on top of that, he also uses a very emotionally compelling component to that title and that is things they don't tell you. It makes the viewer go, oh, what don't they tell me? I have to know. I want to know what he's going to tell me. It makes them want to know. Their curiosity is invoked and they want to know what he's going to talk about in this video. So it's using a well thought out keyword in addition to some sort of emotional component that piques the viewer's curiosity and makes them just die to know what you're gonna be talking about in this video. We've been getting calls every week now from people that wanna get out of the city and move to Montana and get away from it all. And I get that, I can't imagine living in a big city the past six months with all the lockdowns and everything. But the people that wanna get away, I don't think they realize, and if you're which brings me to item number three. This is a trending topic that is extremely timely and relevant. We are talking about the pandemic. He's mentioning in the video how Montana was not nearly as affected by the virus as other places because they are not so densely populated. They were not locked down for months and months on end, 
And in fact, it's kind of business as usual back in Montana, simply because they don't have thousands and thousands of people per square mile like they do in the big cities. Now, this is also a little bit of a polarizing topic because he's saying, don't move to Montana and do all of the things that you did in the big city expecting us to change. Instead, you're moving here because you want this lifestyle. You need to adapt to the Montana way of life rather than forcing your big city views on us locals. Now, some people are going to be offended by that and they're not going to like it. Other people are going to say, amen, brother, and that is okay. We want to be a little bit polarizing in our content if you want people to rally around you and agree with your shared beliefs. It is just as important to repel the people who are not your ideal clients as it is to attract your ideal client. And how do you do that? You do that by making a stand. Now, he was a little bit concerned at the beginning because locals do not like the idea of city slickers coming in and trying to change Montana. In fact, listen to this little bit that he said in his video. Right now, that's really happened in, Boz in the Bozeman area. In fact, Bozeman is now known as Boz Angeles because so many people from- And so apparently this is a common thing. People move from the big cities to more rural areas, but they elect the same people that they had in their other city, and then it starts to change and they can't imagine why it's not so great anymore. So he came right out and he said it. Do not force your views on the locals. If you're moving here because you like the way Montana is, don't try to change it. You are the one that needs to adapt, not Montana. He got a lot of comments from locals saying, we don't want you coming here. And at first he was very concerned and asked me if he should shut off the comments. I said, you know what? It's important for you to take a stand. And the more comments you get on that video, the more engagement it is and the more positive of a signal that is to YouTube. So I say, let it ride. The other thing we have out here is animals and a lot of them. We have bear, wolf, elk, deer, uh, it's great, but if you live way out here, you're going to have to be careful with your food that you leave out, dog food, whatever it may be. Uh, if you have chickens, they can, you know, draw in these predators. And thing number four that Will did so well was to talk about the cons of moving to this area, not only the pros. I believe that this does two things in the mind of the viewer. Number one, it makes you come across as more trustworthy and more honest because you're not just a salesperson that's going to tell them whatever they want to hear. You're not just blowing sunshine up their skirt in order to make the sale. You're telling them the pros and you're telling them the cons. And when you are telling them the things that they may not like about the area, as well as the things they're going to love, it makes you more believable, more trustworthy, more honest, and therefore you are going to earn their business when the time comes. But maybe even more importantly is this element of reverse psychology. In the video, Will is basically telling them why you are not going to like living in Montana. And by saying, these are all the reasons you're not gonna like it here, maybe that little bit of reverse psychology makes them say, oh yeah, I'm actually gonna love that. I'll show you. And so when they watch this video, they get sucked in. They wanna hear all of these negatives about living there they end up watching the video a good chunk of the way. Now, Will was kind enough to share his analytics with me, and this video is seven minutes and 32 seconds long. His average view duration is four minutes and nine seconds long, which means the average viewer is watching it more than 50% of the way through. We know that the YouTube algorithm loves watch time. It wants the viewer to click on that video and then watch it for as long as possible. So if the viewer is watching it for more than half of the video, more than 50% of the way through, this is a very clear signal to YouTube that, hey, people love this video. First it gets the click, then it gets the views, then it gets the watch time, and that makes YouTube want to surface this video to even more people in the future. So pro tip, get your average view percentage to at least 50%, if not higher, whenever possible, and you'll have a much greater chance of having your video go viral as well. 
you may take care of your property and have it the way you want but the neighbor may move in and decide to put a bunch of old junky trailers and, and junk cars all over their property. And because there's no covenant. Now, this has nothing to do with the reason why the video went viral, but I just want to have this be some encouragement to you, the viewer, who wants to have a viral video like this. It is not overly produced. It is not super fancy. He didn't use crazy expensive equipment and have an editor who spent 16 hours editing this video with motion graphics and sound effects and all of the things. This was filmed very simply. In fact, he was standing there on the side of the road, probably with his phone on a tripod. And in all of the time that he was speaking, we never even saw a car go by, which just reinforces the fact that if you move to Montana, you're living out in the country, you are going to be truly isolated and living in the country, which is apparently what these people are looking for. But because the video just used very simple B-roll when he was showing the bears, when he was showing the junkie cars parked in someone's driveway, that was all stuff that's easy to film on your own with your phone or a very basic camera without having to go all out on video production. So we know that fancy camera equipment and fancy filming techniques were not the reason that this video did so well. And now reason number five, take a look at the thumbnail. What do you notice? It does not have his face on the thumbnail. Yes, I know that as realtors, we want to brand ourselves on everything, but I've been experimenting with this as well. And whenever I make a video for my channel where I assume that the person watching the video is not already familiar with me, they haven't seen my content before, they've never visited my channel before, they don't know me from Adam. Therefore, my smiling face on the thumbnail doesn't draw them in because they don't know who I am. I think the same thing happened for Will. The vast majority of people that this was suggested to did not know him. They did not know his channel. They probably had not seen his content before. And as a result, they did not feel like it was going to be a big sales pitch and they clicked on it. So do yourself a favor. You can use awesome tools like TubeBuddy's Legend Plan, which lets you do A-B testing of thumbnails or you can just try making a thumbnail that doesn't have your face on it and see if you get a higher than normal click-through rate versus what you typically get. As much as I would love to have my face on every thumbnail that I make, I'm not too proud. If I get a higher click-through rate by not putting my picture on it, you can bet I'm not gonna put my picture on it. So don't be afraid to experiment and see if that works for you as well. So now we know what elements made this video such a huge success. And now we're ready to go implement these strategies on our own videos. Now having a video go viral is amazing, but it's not necessary to get business from your YouTube channel. You can get business from your YouTube channel as far as clients that call you, hire you, and end up at the closing table with only 50 subscribers or 100 subscribers. Thousands and thousands of subscribers are not necessary, but let's face it, who would not want the bragging rights of saying that they had a video with a million views, right? This is what having a YouTube channel does for you. If you wanna learn how to start attracting clients to your channel by making simple videos like this, watch this one next where I go into the whole strategy of how you can attract business to your YouTube channel and never have to cold call again.